What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be talking about a couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade for the second week here in March of 2019, and we're also going to be talking about a couple of stocks and ETFs that you guys actually called out in our call out section, in our 100% free Discord group chat, as well as some that you guys ended up DMing me on my personal Instagram page. So we're going to be doing a bunch of breakdowns in this video gearing up and getting ready for this next week here in March of 2019 with trading with our stocks what are we going to be doing this week we're going to be talking about that in today's video but before we do get into that guys for everybody out there that finds value in these videos you enjoy the content here on YouTube feel free to go down below and hit that like button guys it really does support the channel and supports me in general and if you're new to the community guys and you want to join our community and, and be in touch on a further basis, feel free to go down below. We have a 100% free Discord group chat as well as a 100% free Facebook group. You can be a part of both of those communities simply by clicking those links and joining the communities, guys. So without further ado, let's talk about a couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and some that you guys ended up calling out to me, starting off here with natural gas, the natural gas futures. And for those of you guys that don't know, I'm sure a bunch of you guys already know, we trade two ETFs that correlate to the natural gas futures. And those two ETFs are UGAS and DGAS. And pretty much they're inverse ETFs. UGAS is the bull ETF and DGAS is the bear ETF. Whenever natural gas is going up in price, UGAS is going up in price. And whenever natural gas is going down in price, Price, D gas is going up in price. So we've been doing technical breakdowns on natural gas here for a long time, guys, pretty much for the entirety of of this YouTube channel's existence, we've been talking about the natural gas futures. And for those of you guys that have been paying attention to the technicals here on natural gas, you know that we peaked out nearly at $5 a couple of months back really in the middle of November of 2018. And from there, we saw a huge bearish trend. We went from $5 nearly all the way down to about $2.50 about a couple of weeks ago, back in the middle to the beginning of February of 2019. We lost nearly half the value in the natural gas futures here. And we can tell, guys, you know, based off these technicals, we were getting rejected by the 180 SMA. We were in this downwards trending channel here, getting rejected by the 50 SMA, the simple moving averages here that we can see. And really, we weren't showing any signs of a breakout reversal to the upside until we saw this double bottom here at about $2.58. And from there, we started to trend back up. We started to break resistance levels. We broke out of the 50 SMA and ultimately the 180 SMA a couple of weeks back. And now, guys, we're at a very, very critical point here. So if you guys watched my videos a couple weeks ago, I was talking about this $2.70 level resistance for natural gas. And we can clearly see... If I extend this drawing a bit, we can clearly see we broke out of that, we held it as a new support, and now we're trending up to break, or try to break rather, the next resistance, which is at about $2.90, and we've had a bit of a, you know, difficulty breaking out of there over these past couple of trading days. We can see it here, guys. We can see it this past week. We had some trouble breaking out of there, and this is where... I'm personally interested in playing either DGAS or UGAS based on what this future is going to do. Are we going to break out of this resistance to test the next resistance, which is going to be nearly at $3, which is going to give us obviously a huge margin on UGAS, which again is the bull ETF, or are we going to get rejected here, slowly start to push down, slowly start to break the support levels of the 50 SMA and the 180 SMA, and ultimately the $2.70 support here where we would be able to play DGAS. So for this upcoming week, guys, like I said, you know, I'm going to be watching where we're going up or down really to determine what I'm going to be trading, whether it be the bull ETF or the bear ETF. And for those of you guys that don't know, the futures markets, they open up at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, about two hours and 15 minutes away from when I'm actually recording this video. 
so in about really once this video is uploaded the futures markets are going to be open and you're going to be able to see where we're moving in terms of natural gas and you'll be able to plan your trades accordingly so just take an eye literally pause this video right now because you're watching this video right now the futures markets are open so go take a look where are we pushing are we pushing up here are we pushing down that's going to help you determine what you're going to be trading whether it be u gas or d gas so natural gas guys u gas d gas these are the ones i'm watching for this upcoming week these are the first combo of etfs that i'm going to be watching a couple of more here that i'm going to be watching uh in terms of stocks one is ticker symbol YY, and this has been on my watch list for a couple of weeks now, have not yet traded it, but I do see a ton of potential here if we do end up breaking this resistance at about $75 to $76. I can see it potentially running back up to about $80, which is the next resistance that we do see here, and if we do end up popping above $80, the next spot I'm going to be waiting for to potentially run to is $86, which is about $10 higher from where we are right now uh, in YY, and that's about a 10% move. Am I saying it's going to run that much? Absolutely not. We don't know, but if we do end up breaking this resistance, guys, there's a big chance that we could end up breaking the next resistance, which in that case, we'll be able to test that mid $80 level at that point. But for this week, you know, Monday, Tuesday, we're going baby steps here, baby steps, step by step. We're going to be waiting to see if we break the first resistance that we are at right now to fill to the next resistance. And if we do do that again we'll be looking to see whether or not we're going to be breaking to the upside to the mid 80s uh you know right around here to that previous resistance and another thing that i like about yy here guys is we're holding that 50 sma as a support that has been a support over these past couple of weeks really since the beginning of february in 2019 we can see that Clearly, we've bounced on that a couple of times, held it as a support, and this past week, we actually saw a very big sell-off, really, of about $15 per share in YY, which really opened up that massive margin of profit. So YY, watching that one very closely for this upcoming week. Another one I'm personally watching, guys, is Tesla, ticker symbol TSLA, and this one really has been consolidating at about $275 for the past couple of days. I believe it was for the entire previous week here the first week of march in 2019 and what i'm going to be waiting for now guys is for us to maintain this level at about 285 283 285 to hold that as a new support level to slowly start to fill the gap back up to this 50 SMA resistance, which would be at around $290 to $292. And if we break that, we could potentially be running up to the resistance portion of this downwards trending channel. So keep an eye on this, guys. You know, we're seeing a bunch of different lines here that may confuse you. Let me just quickly clear this drawing set. We can see, you know, Tesla's clearly on a downwards trending channel, right? And if we do end up popping up here to potentially test that resistance portion, this will put us at about $300 per share for Tesla stock if it does end up filling this gap, which could give it about, you know, a six, maybe five, six, seven percent margin of profit. So I'm watching Tesla very closely, guys, ticker symbol TSLA. But let's say we end up breaking down here, we break the 270 level, there definitely could be some more downside in Tesla stock, maybe back down to let's say the $260 level. I know a bunch of people in our community and just in the stock market community in general have been talking about a possible sell-off in Tesla, you know, maybe down to 250, maybe back down to 240 and maybe back down to 260 it's very very possible guys especially if we're looking at this channel there's definitely some more room to the downside but you know if we do end up holding this support we start to pop back up. There's room to the upside as well. We just need to see, you know, what are these technicals going to end up doing? Are we going to pop up and break down? That is going to be the indication of what we're going to end up doing. Are we going to play put options on a short position on Tesla? Or, you know, are we going to ride it up with call options or with shares, regular shares? You know, we just got to see what's going to end up happening tomorrow. Pre-market hours. Are the futures going to be down, et cetera, et cetera. These are things that we need to take into account before we do end up trading um you know ticker symbol tsla 
Tesla guys. So another ETF I'm watching is TVIX. And for those of you guys that don't know, TVIX goes up in price when the overall markets are selling off. And this one in particular keeps a, note, a close track on the SPX, the S&P 500. So for all you guys that have been following the markets in general, you've seen a big sell-off in the overall markets this past week, right? From about $2,800 in the SPX down to about $2,700, we've seen about a 3% sell-off. So if we do experience a further sell-off, which I personally think is very, very possible this week, especially if we get rejected by this resistance right here at about 2740 on the SPX and we slowly start to head back down to the next support at about $2,700, that's going to open up a ton of margin of profit on TVIX, which again goes up when the SPX is selling off. So keep an eye here, guys. Right now, we see a pretty big margin of profit opened up on TVIX due to the market run-up that we saw in the latter half of the day on Friday. For all you guys that didn't see that, the SPX, the Dow, the NASDAQ, if we look on the one day, one minute here very quickly, we can see we sold off pretty heavily, you know, on Friday morning. And then we actually ran up all the way back up to about $2,740 from about the $2,720 low. So we had a $25 point swing to the upside which really opened up that margin on TVIX so again guys just keep an eye on this one this one could end up being a nice play this upcoming week if we do end up selling off so let's talk about a couple of stocks here that I do have listed that you guys wanted me to talk about starting off with Facebook stock ticker symbol F. B. So let's see what this one's looking like guys these are off the cuff I've yet to take a look at these stocks Let's take a quick look, or rather draw out some resistance and support levels so we can get an understanding here of what's potentially happening, you know, in Facebook stock. So clearly, guys, we can see here, you know, we're trading in this horizontal pattern you know, or horizontal channel, rather, in Facebook stock from this old resistance at about 160, which is clearly now a new support, and the other old resistance, which we've yet to break above at about $170. So we are really having some difficulty breaking above 170 in Facebook stock. We can see a couple of weeks back, back in the beginning of February, we got rejected there, sold off back down to that support, and now we're testing that same exact resistance at about 170. And so the positive thing that I'm seeing here on Facebook stock, although we did get rejected a couple of days ago at the 170 resistance, we're actually pulling back and we're holding the 50 SMA support here on the 180 day excuse me, four hour chart. So this is a good sign that this is just merely a little pullback and we're continuing the uptrend and we're not actually selling all the way off back down to that $160 support. So this could be a potential breakout pattern in terms of Facebook. And obviously, you know, you probably, you guys could probably guess it. What I'm watching this upcoming week, you know, we're right at that resistance at 170 and we're pulling back, like I said, holding that uptrend. This is looking like a break breakout pattern what am I going to be waiting for I'm going to be waiting for that break above 170 back into the 172s maybe 173 ultimately the mid 170s before really possibly taking a position in Facebook as a swing trade and if we do end up breaking that resistance guys that's going to be a pretty big breakout pattern to the upside with the next target on Facebook stock you know, being at around, let's see, 179, roughly $180. So keep an eye on that level. If we break up, you know, we're going to potentially hold this resistance as a new support to slowly start to fill the gap back up to $180 for Facebook stock. So the next one we're going to be talking about is Apple here. And Apple's at a very similar, you know, very similar scenario as Facebook in terms of seeing a strong resistance roughly at about $175. We noticed in the beginning of February, we got topped off at about $175. We sold off down to the previous resistance, which is obviously now a new support at about $167. And if I stretch this out a bit more, you can see exactly what I'm talking about. And we ended up holding that support very nicely. And from there, we've been trading in this horizontal pattern really for the past month and some change right now, guys. We can see the resistance, the sell-off, the hold on the support, the pop-up, the resistance, the sell-off, the hold on the support. And now, guys, 
we're facing not really a similar battle to Facebook because on Facebook stock, we're holding that 50 SMA as a support, but on Apple stock, we're actually looking at the 50 SMA as a resistance. So it's a kind of a different battle here. What we want to see in terms of Apple is a break out of this 50 SMA of resistance and ultimately a break out of the $175 resistance for a potential fill up to the next spot, which in this case would be at about $185 per share on Apple stock. So keep an eye on the break of the 50 SMA and this resistance and a potential hold on this resistance here as a new support at about 175 to 176 and from there we'll be able to fill the gap back up hopefully to 185 which would offer about a 4 or 5% margin of profit as a swing trade but until we break above here guys I'm not really going to be watching this you know in my swing portfolio for potential trade I really want the confirmation and the hold before really getting into Apple stock so let's talk about square and google very quickly guys ticker symbol sq let's see what's going on with this one so square we're looking like we're at uh let's see it's looking like Okay, we bounced at the $71 support this past week. That's right. Square ended up selling off very, very heavily this past week from about $82 all the way down to about $71. And it's looking like we're playing with the resistance here at about $74. Are we above that resistance? It looks like we did break above it, actually, and we're holding it right now. So keep an eye this week, guys. Are we going to hold the $74 level in terms of Square stock? And I drag if I drag this you guys can see it if we end up holding the $74 level here you know in terms of square stock let's see if we go back you know this is going to be a potential fill back up to about 77 to 78 dollars but very similar to apple stock we're trading under the 50 sma resistance right now which is actually looking like it's curling back down and if we do end up curling back down and breaking below the 180 sma you all should know by now that that is a bearish signal so let's say you know, Square stock ends up selling off this week as well, maybe back down to $71. That 50 SMA, it's going to be curling down and breaking below the 180 SMA, which again, it's going to be a bearish signal. And I'm not really going to be interested in trading Square stock if that does end up happening. But if we end up breaking back up, let's say into the $75 level and we break that 50 SMA, you know, this could be a good play up to about $78. And if we break $78 back up to $80, this could be a solid, solid move in terms of square stock. So keep an eye for that break into the $75, $76 level. If we break to the downside here, the 50 crosses below the 180, this could be a potential short play, potential put option play in terms of square stock. So let's talk about Google very quickly. I don't really trade Google ever, guys, to be honest. I don't think I've ever honestly traded Google stock. I probably have, but I just forget now off the top of my head. I've never honestly invested in Google either. But Google stock now, guys, it's looking pretty solid. And I do like this call out. Thank you to whoever ended up calling out Google stock here. You know, this one's looking pretty solid in terms of this pullback from about 1165 down to about 1128 opened up about a 3% margin of profit. And I'm sure you guys can already tell we're holding that 50 SMA as a support very nicely, which has been a support over the past couple of weeks here, really the past couple of months in terms of Google stock. And another thing I want to point out here on the 184 hour chart is the fact that Google stock, we're seeing a cross of the 50 SMA above the 180 SMA, which we all know by now is a bullish sign. That's a bullish cross, which could indicate some more potential upside in Google stock. So let's say the markets do well tomorrow and Tuesday and Wednesday. Let's say we're pushing up green. This could follow. This could be a potential bounce back up to test a new higher high. But let's say the markets do sell off, guys. You know, I probably will expect, you know, Google to sell off as well since it is, you know, a pretty large stock out there, you know, like Apple, Facebook, you know, Google. These are huge, huge companies, huge, huge stocks where if the market does see a pretty big red day, 
more than likely those stocks are going to be down in price as well. You know, we've seen Tesla do well, you know, when the stocks are selling off, but or the markets are selling off rather. But Google, since it's a bigger, bigger company, guys, you know, this one probably will sell off, you know, if the markets do sell off. Just, you know, as a test here, we see it did that a couple of months back when the market sold off heavily. You know, Google sold off pretty heavily as well but we're looking at tesla here this one did well when the market sold off right very odd right very odd we see tesla it's almost like tesla's a hedge to the markets doing poorly it's not really a hedge to the markets doing poorly but that's how it did act you know over the past uh you know over that last market sell-off that we saw so just be careful here with these larger cap stock uh stocks guys because you know the markets if the markets sell off these could take a big hit as well. But in terms of Google stock here, we're seeing a nice uptrend. We're seeing a nice pullback. And keep an eye, are we going to continue this? Are we going to bounce above the 50 SMA and continue to push up? That's going to be a good opportunity for Google. So let's take a look at CL and UWT very quickly. And for those of you guys that don't know, CL is the crude oil futures. And whenever CL is going up in price, UWT is going up in price. There's a there's an inverse ETF combo we trade on this channel and in our community, UWT and DWT, right? DWT is the bear ETF. UWT is the bull ETF, meaning whenever crude oil is going up, UWT is going up. And whenever crude oil is going down, DWT is going up. So right now we're noticing kind of a weird, not weird pattern in crude oil, but more of a consolidation pattern here over these past couple of trading days, right? We can see really a horizontal consolidation pattern, rather. We can see the resistance here at about 57.50. And let me just quickly clear this because this is looking very, very sloppy. Over time, when you know I'm drawing all these trend lines, it starts to get a little sloppy. So let's take a look at a cleaner look here on the crude oil chart. And if we draw this horizontal pattern you guys can clearly see what i'm talking about right the resistance at about 5760 and the support which we bounced above this past week at about 55 dollars and 26 cents so we can solidify that we bounced on the support right very clear confirmation on the bounce here so what i'm going to be waiting for guys is really a continuation to the top of this channel here at about $57.60 to continue this horizontal pattern that we've been on over these past couple of weeks. And what does that entail? Well, we need to see a break above this 50 SMA here ideally because this this has been a resistance over the past couple of days guys really since the whole month really for the whole month of uh march we can see this has been a resistance right the candlesticks struggled to break above it there struggled to break above it there leading to that big sell-off but we got the confirmation of the bounce on the support and we ended up popping up here which is a good sign so right now what i want to see again is the break above the 50 sma and ultimately a break above this 57.66 or 56 675 level and from there guys if we're inching up here we're breaking above the 50 sma this could be a very good sign to trade uwt guys uwt again this is the bull etf that trades based upon crude oil and we can notice here that uwt kind of has a bearish pattern here of lower lows and lower highs right the high here at about 1630 the next at about 1615 and it's been struggling to break out from there but you know, if we do end up seeing that pop in crude oil, that's going to change everything in terms of UWT, and we'll be able to break out of this wedge that we're slowly starting to see forming on UWT. So keep an eye, guys, what I just said on crude oil. That's going to be a very huge <clears throat> potential move to the upside. And let's say we do end up popping out of the 57 level, that's going to be a huge, huge bullish move that could entail more green in crude oil, and of course, UWT. So the last two we're going to be talking about here are ENTG, followed by Boeing stock. And actually, these two guys, Boeing and ENTG, they have very similar patterns, right? And let me explain what I mean by that. We can see they're both holding old resistances right now from the past couple of weeks as new support levels. But ENTG, guys, the worrisome thing I'm seeing here is the break below the 50 SMA support, which has been a support from the beginning or towards the end, rather, of December of 2018. We can see the support here 
support. And now we're breaking below that, which could entail a potential bearish move in ENTG. But the thing that keeps my hopes alive for ENTG is the fact that we held, I believe for the past two days, let's see, at about 50 or $34, which is the old resistance, which is now a new support. That's giving me some hope, the fact that we're holding that level over the past two days. But now, all I want to see, guys, is a pop probably back into the $36 level, which would break it above that 50 SMA and in turn continue that uptrend. So I'm going to create an alert very quickly here. ENTG mark is at or above Let's say $36. I want to be alerted if it does end up popping above that level. And from there, we could end up seeing a nice ride back up to $38, which would be about a 5% move in terms of ENTG. Solid, solid call out there. I just want to see a further confirmation of the push to the upside. And Boeing, like I said, very similar pattern, right? We're seeing the hold on the previous resistance at about 415 as a new support. And we also broke below that 50 SMA here, you know, which has been a support over the past couple of months. So simply a break above $430 here in terms of Boeing stock, you know, this could be a potential move back up to the $445 uh, resistance that we are seeing from a couple of weeks back, I believe about 10 days ago. So is at or above $400.30. And just to warn you guys a bit, you know, Boeing stock is at all-time highs, or it was at all-time highs at about 450, and it really has shot up an insanely amount, an insane amount over the past couple of months. So be careful here, guys. If the markets do end up downturning, Boeing stock can see a huge, huge hit, especially since it is a very, very big company, very large market cap. These companies do end up getting hit pretty hard when the markets do end up downturning as we can see here from the beginning of October down to about the end of uh, December when we saw that big sell-off we saw about a 100 percent uh, not 100 percent a 100 dollar move to the downside in terms of Boeing stock so I would just wait for the break above 430 if the markets are pushing green this one could end up recovering making it a nice play but if the markets do bad, do poorly, let's say we sell off to the $2,700 level in the S&P, you know, I think Boeing's probably going to end up selling off more, maybe back down to the $400 flat level, maybe back to this 180 SMA level at about 390 395 That's just my personal opinion. That's what I'm personally watching. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, Feel free to leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe to the channel if you're new, hit that notification bell so you're notified every time that I do make a video. And let me know down below, guys, what are you trading this upcoming week? What are you watching? What are your thoughts? Are we going to sell off in the stock market? Are we going to push up, test that $2,800 level yet again in the SPX? I would love to know what you guys think. But that's it for today's video, guys. Thanks again for watching. I really do appreciate all of your support. We're almost at 2,000 subscribers. If you have yet to subscribe again, like I said, feel free to subscribe. I'm uploading daily content here, trading updates, market updates, all the different jazz that we talk about, about the stock market. You can find a video on that on my channel. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Again, thanks for watching. Peace out.